Hey guys, what's up? Stock Retail coming back to you on a Sunday um, here on the West Coast, still early afternoon. East Coasters, you're probably starting to round into your evening, so who knows, maybe you won't see this till your Monday. Um, just something I've said I'd do for a while, take a look at Q3, how we're tracking. Uh, pretty much if you haven't been under a rock, you already know we're tracking amazingly because of Barbenheimer. But going to dig into the details a little bit and see what does that mean kind of for the rest of the quarter, where are we going to land. Um, share with you kind of an outlook on how that what that means to AMC earnings as well and, and even through Q4 because of some of the implications of the strike and what, what movies are still out there all of that so we'll go through that um, I've said I would do that for a while uh, if today just kind of maybe uh, I'll head off if I ramble a little more than usual say a few more ums than usual I'm still really fatigued coming off of COVID there's I'm just kind of carrying a bit of a hangover from that so feeling better but just real tired and brain feels like it's in a cloud here so I uh, apologize if we ramble a little bit today, but I think you guys, um, most of you, if you've followed me for a minute, you kind of know what to expect today. Um, all right, so let's just dive in. Um, what we're going to kind of look through, so just kind of a reminder why I focus so much on the box office. Um, obviously, the, for, the box office forecast helps me get to AMC's earnings forecasts. Some of you, I noticed I picked up a few more followers recently, so you might not know, like I have a background in forecasting uh, multiple business degrees, experience at a Dow Jones company doing this work, leading teams doing this. So that's the kind of point of view I'm coming from is someone who kind of understands forecasting a bit. I'll say over and over with humility on this channel, it does not mean you're going to have things right. In fact, in forecasting, um, some of you guys are probably tired of hearing me say, but this is kind of for the new people around this channel. Um, there's a saying in forecasting, if you have a forecast, it's wrong. So everything I'm going to share with you today is a forward-looking statement. It's a forecast. Um, yes, I've got some skill and some history here and have had a lot of accuracy, um, although I'm going to talk about where I've been wrong this quarter already. And good news, I've been wrong to the downside. In other words, movies are, are outperforming my forecast yet again. So that's awesome. Uh, but anyway, so the forecast drives, um, sorry, the box office drives a forecast of ticket sales. So I kind of extrapolate that into AMC's global admissions. Obviously, AMC is a global brand. You've got Odeon and some other uh, marquee names over in Europe and around the world. So um, forecasting global sales. And then, of course, attendance, which is going to be used in our concessions, you know, food and beverage spending per person. Adam updates that, um, updates us on that from time to time. And we get updates in the earnings call. So that helps me forecast our concessions. And then even our other um, uh, revenues. I've noticed the merch, uh, the popcorn bucket sales, and just various other revenue. It, it tracks kind of um, attendance fairly well also. <clears throat> okay, so one thing I've noticed um, and why I've been wanting to do this Q3 video is people, the hype is real and, and in a good way, right? Like people have a real good reason to be excited. And of course, um, I was just looking at this today. If you haven't seen another video um, I did on Box Office Mojo, and how Sunday numbers um, already include basically Sunday estimates. So at the top here, you're seeing the domestic box office is already at $1.33 billion, um, which is amazing. Uh, but that includes basically an estimate for Sunday. So it's like through Sunday numbers, which means we got one more day of box office to add to this. So you notice I've kind of highlighted for you 2013 and 2016 look like they were the biggest Julys ever. And we only need another $44 million at the box office to hit the biggest July ever. Um, if you ask me, I kind of don't think we will. I think we'll be just below that. Uh, you know, so what I'm saying is Monday, I don't think we'll come in with 44 million, but um, it's certainly a chance. We, we've got a, a, we're sniffing at the biggest July ever. And so people have gotten real excited. But here's the problem I've seen from that. Um, I'm seeing some accounts on Twitter in particular. Uh, I've told you guys, um, if you're kind of more of a YouTube ape, I'm more of a Twitter ape. I started this YouTube channel uh, September of 2022, actually, to help share all these forecasts, because back then I saw that um, basically, I think even the first video I ever did all the way last September, I said the Q2 of this year, we were going to see profits. And sure enough, I still believe that. So um, maybe a little credibility there for me, a feather in the cap. But um, one of the things I see on Twitter is people are taking this, what I just showed you, like, hey, we already got, you know, over a billion in July. So we're going to hit three billion for the quarter. In forecasting, that's kind of called run rate. So you just say, well, what's been our average so far? And if we keep averaging that, here's how that projects out. Well, the problem with movies, you, you can't do run rate forecasting. There's a reason I'm showing Barbie and Oppenheimer on here. 
I'm sure you realize how huge Barbie and Oppenheimer have been um, as part of this 1.33 billion. They're, they're massive. And we just, we don't have any other Barbie or Oppenheimer level movies the rest of the quarter. So what you really want to look at when you're forecasting is you don't forecast a run rate, you forecast the actual movies that are coming. And I've said that also ever since that first video I did, that I'm digging deep to put a forecast against every movie that's on the sort of slate um, and by date. And so some of these then even, um, like you don't see on here, there's a really neat AI movie coming out called The Creator. Well, it comes out on September 29th. So we're getting basically like <coughs> one or two days of revenue this quarter for that. So you have to look at which movies are coming. You have to look at what date they're coming. Is any of that revenue carrying over into the next quarter? All of that. Now, let's be excited for a minute. You know, while we don't have another Barbie level or Oppenheimer level, look at these movies. There's some great movies coming. So in just a week, we've got The Meg 2 and we've got Turtles coming out. I am super excited for Turtles. Um, just looks really awesome. By, by all uh, accounts so far, it looks like they nailed it. Like it's funny. It's artistic. Um, I think that one's going to do really well. Uh, the Meg 2, I just think that's going to be a super fun summer movie. You can see there's there's basically a Dracula movie, so the voyage, Last Voyage of the Demeter. Um, we've got Gran Turismo. I won't list all the rest of these. You can kind of see them, pause this, take a look, or just go um, for yourself and kind of Google what movies are coming out. Uh, but the point is, you, you can see here, these are awesome. These are going to be great, but we are going to slow down. We're not going to keep this pace up. Um, over time, Barbie and Oppenheimer, while they have amazing legs, they're going to still print money basically it's going to be awesome and frankly even mission impossible is not done um even movies like elemental are still going to roll for a while uh but that's not the level we've been at and i'm going to actually show you what the last few weeks have looked like um in terms of just a steep steep climb um on revenues and it's just you know i, I guess i'm just tempering the enthusiasm to with some reality that you, you just aren't going to keep up that same trajectory but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be celebrating. We should absolutely be celebrating. It's going to be an awesome quarter. It's crushing my expectations. Um, and, and by the way, the other thing that's kind of beaten my forecast is, you know, I didn't have Sound of Freedom on the radar before we started this quarter. Uh, I didn't realize that was going to be as huge as it has been um, and as sort of culturally impacting as it has been. So that's been awesome. You know, we've got some real big beats. Um, and like with Barbie and Oppenheimer, I knew they'd be huge, but I, I still thought they were a little bit overhyped, and they were not. They're actually beating even the hype level forecasts, so that's just awesome. Um, the other thing I've shown on some past videos, so if you're new here, this might be the first time you're seeing it. If you've been around, um, you've seen this before, but it's revised, so you can actually see if you had a real eagle eye, you'd see that Q3 is up quite a bit from um, what I've shown in the past Q4 is down a little bit, and we'll talk about why that is. But we're in a new reality. So if you look at our last three quarters we had finished, um, Q3, Q4 of 22, and then Q1 of this year, just look, you can just see visually. If you add those three, and then you look at the three that we're in now, um, Q2, which we've finished, Q3 that here we're talking about, and then Q4 that's coming. Um, so obviously some forecast built in there. Q2 is the only one that's fully baked. But you can just see how much... Um, a higher of a business. It's like we've established a whole new baseline and we're in a whole new reality. We're not living where we used to live in terms of revenue at the box office and revenue for AMC. It's just radically different. And then, oh, by the way, on top of all that, if you were to layer on the fact that basically popcorn first went wide in all the Walmart doors here in Q2. So we're just in a completely new reality. And so for me, that's been a big brain shift. That's what I'm saying. I called out all the way last September um, and I'm trying to help all of us sort of shift our psychology. It kind of helps us be FUD proof when we understand we're in a new environment where our business is printing money, um, and it's not like it used to be, and the sort of the FUD accounts are using old talking points that have nothing to do with our current reality, and I want you to see that. Um, and then just look, I mean, just Q, so this, uh, look at this little sub bullet at the top. Q2 through Q4, so just three out of the four quarters of the year, are bigger than the entire year of last year. So I'll say that again. So you can see like these three quarters right now are forecast at seven and a half billion total for the domestic, sorry for the typo, domestic box office, which is about 40% higher than the same three quarters of last year. Sorry, that's 40% higher than these three quarters. 
but so these three quarters are forecast at seven and a half billion dollars total domestic box office. That's bigger than the entire box office of all of 2022. And you can kind of see why. I mean, look at Q1 here was really low. And then these two quarters are much lower than we're in now. So just massive, massive results these three quarters and puts us in a very different place. So here we are coming up on August 8th. I'll do another video soon where I'll deep dive um, on the Q2 earnings and, and kind of give you a preview and a forecast. So we'll see if I can get that right before the earnings call. Um, but so our 8-8 earnings call, and then you can forecast out, like we'll have an earnings call in November that'll be based off of this quarter here. And then we would have kind of the full year, you know, we don't get the earnings for the full year until kind of into next year. But the next three earnings call, my point is, are going to be a lot, lot better than anything we've seen for a long time. Okay, so this is what I was saying I would show you. This is the Barbenheimer impact. And, and you can understand um, it's totally worth celebrating. And it's also worth uh, being honest with ourselves that, okay, how long can you continue this rate of being that much bigger than last year? Although we're going to be, I mean, really, if you just think through how big this quarter is compared to the same quarter last year, we're going to keep picking up. And so some of you have seen this from me before. It's something I refresh from time to time. It's just, it's literally a by day um, view of essentially how far are we racing ahead of last year. So if we were down at $0, it would mean we're at the same amount as last year. So you can see we're already almost um, scratching at a billion dollars more at the box office than last year. So here we are, I think it was through 211 days here. Um, so basically two thirds of the year done, not quite. Um, and we've got almost a billion dollars more at the box office than last year. Now remember, I, I told you, that's I'm talking about the box office, but that also represents food and beverage sales. That also represents other, you know, like merchandise and popcorn buckets and all of that. Um, so it's massive, massive that we're a billion dollars ahead of last year at just the domestic box office. Then of course, extrapolate that out to the total globe. And you can see, I've loved trolling shorty on this. They are shorting an industry. This is the industry you're seeing, not just AMC. They're shorting an industry that is this steeply up and to the right versus last year. Just crazy. I, I, it blows my mind that they're shorting that industry, especially when AMC is about to get access to capital. So, you know, good luck, Shorty. This is hopefully apes proving to you the thesis um, that we're moving the right direction and profits are coming. So I will now kind of shift gears a little bit. That's just the overall domestic view of the box office. Let's talk a little bit about AMC and, and what does that translate into for Q3. Man, I've got some typos today. There's the, there's the COVID brain, like I warned you. So not reminder, reminder what's in the forecasts. Now think of it like a soup. There's a lot of ingredients in the soup. Um, I look at every single line item from the P&L. So if you've been around here a minute, you would know if you're new, I'm just telling you. I go through every earnings report and I basically um, move it all into Excel. So every line item, so for example, they've got rent, they've got depreciation, they've got, um, you know, you're paying your workers, so there's something called um, operating expenses. Uh, you've got debt payments, you know, that's all on the expense side, so that's the L part, the loss part. Profit and loss, by the way, if you're in business, P&L. Um, on the revenue side, you know, you've got admissions, you've got the food and beverage sales, you've got the other um, revenue. These days we got popcorn. I do have a forecast for that, although as a percent of the business, it's really tiny what I've got. So I, um, I always head off the trolls and say, look, you could zero out my popcorn forecast and I'd still really give you basically the same forecast I'm about to show you. Um, I do think it's big. I think it will probably even beat my numbers. Uh, hopefully, you know, Adam and Sean maybe give us updates in the earnings call. Let's see if we can start to size the popcorn business. And, and guys, I have zero in there for credit card revenue. Um, that's going to be icing on any cake I show you here, too. So a lot of bullishness you should be hearing there. But I look at every single line item from the p and I have, I don't know, four years, five years um, worth of data that I look at. So I can see history and trends. That's that second bullet. Um, you know, you use history to kind of forecast the future, but you also use what's the trend. For example, rents are lower now than pre-COVID. I've told you about that before. So I... You know, don't just use history because we're actually not um, at historical rents. We're something lower now. Um, so that's an example there. <clears throat> uh, what's in the forecast also would be the impact of past decisions. So every quarter when Adam comes out and says, all right, we paid off X amount of debt, um, I'm able to go in and say, oh, okay, that reduced next quarter's debt payments um, because you're paying an interest rate. And so I can kind of do the math on what kind of savings that is on debt payments. 
Um, when they close properties, you know, that's the reason we're lower on rents or one of the big reasons. When they add properties, I know we, I think we just opened the Boston Arclight finally. Um, so I have assumptions around rent going up for, a, you know, an addition of a property. So all that's in there. Um, I've got assumptions around food and beverage, market share um, of attendance and all of that. You know, for instance, when Adam tweets and says, hey, we had the biggest, you know, spending per person that we ever had in like a week or a weekend or last month, those kinds of things. I take that into account. And so I've got some some assumptions there. So I'm not going to show you all of that, but I've got just detail after detail after detail in my forecast. And I'm going to pull up and just show you guys kind of the top level. So here we are. All right, so for Q3, now remember, I said you can't do that run rate forecast. So right now what I've got is $2.65 billion at the domestic box office, which, by the way, would basically match Q2. I think Q2 was maybe $2.67 um, and was an amazing quarter, right? We had a lot of really big movies in Q2. So Q3 is looking awesome. Um, that, by the way, blows out what I had as a forecast before the quarter started. I like to freeze it so I can kind of hold myself accountable to say, you know, what was what was my original forecast versus where did we land? So I'm not giving you my original forecast here. I'm giving you as of today. This is like live, you know, and mainly because we've got Sound of Freedom. Um, we've got obviously updated numbers on Barbie and Oppenheimer to where we can kind of have a, a more accurate understanding of where they're going to land. So we're just way, way up. That's 38% over last year. Huge growth at the box office this quarter. Um, and really all I'm doing is just repeating... Oops, where'd we go? This. So you can just see Q3 over last Q3, if I drew an arrow, it's this massive jump, right? So um, same thing for Q4. Now let's talk through Q4 a little bit. There are already starting to be rumblings of impacts from the strike. So uh, for example, Ghostbusters was in that quarter. I used to have that in my numbers. Um, that's been moved, I think, to March of 2024. So, you know, nothing too bad from timing wise. It kind of moved from November to March. Not so bad. Um, <clears throat> I'm hearing rumblings Dune might move. That's so far just a rumor, but um, it's kind of a lot of noise around that one. I've heard r rumors that Color of Purple might move. What I understand um, and what I've read on that, just, you know, for y'all, um, doesn't scare me too much. What it's really looking like is it has more to do with the promotion than the actual, you know, like those films are done, um, as my understanding. They could roll them out. But, you know, you want to generate hype. You want to have kind of energy type of events. And a lot of times they'll work with the actors to promote the film. Well, if those actors are striking, they will not promote the films. So uh, the studios are taking some of these and saying, hey, we want to re get a return on our investment. Um, and so they're moving those. Uh, uh, maybe I'll talk about the strike another day. I'm not going to do that too much here. It doesn't worry me too much right now, but obviously Adam has said the longer it drags on, then we start actually seeing impact to do we actually have movies ready to release. So what I'm just telling you is I used to have Q4 at basically flat on earnings, and you can kind of see here I'm now showing a loss in Q4. But um, the bottom line, and I'm going to kind of cover this, is Q3 and Q2 are so huge that it's basically gobbling up any concerns about Q4. I just have no concerns right now about that. Um, so that's really awesome how big Q2 and Q3 have been. Uh, AMC's global revenue range, so you can see for Q3, I think it's gonna be around 1.4 to kind of 1.5 billion. By the way, at one point I had said Q2, AMC would maybe um, break its all-time record for revenue in a quarter. I think it's like just over 1.5. It happened in like Q3, I wanna say, of 2019. Somewhere back there um, was just over 1.5 billion in revenue. We did not, in my opinion, break that for Q2. Uh, a couple movies broke uh, lower than I had hoped, but uh, overall the quarter still beat my forecast. Um, and so at one point, because things were going so awesome, I had said I thought we'd beat the all-time record. But now I do think we still have a shot at maybe the all-time record for AMC's revenue in Q3. So let's see. Let's see how that breaks out. I'm giving you a range here. Same with earnings. Um, so the bottom line here, you can see, I believe now very strongly Q3 is looking like uh, positive earnings. Uh, before Barbie and Oppenheimer and Sound of Freedom crushed my expectations, uh, I had kind of said Q3 was going to be hit or miss, like just on the edge of profits. Now I just think we're solid, solid profits for Q3 because it's so big. Um, and, you know, another three months of growth in, on, in terms of the popcorn business. You know, like I said, I, I don't, even if you wiped that clean, we'd still have profits this quarter in my forecast. 
but it's still worth noting that you know it's another three months of business development basically that that business is getting bigger uh, the brand is getting more known so that's awesome so yeah q4 like i said um i have already zeroed out a couple of those movies that hollywood has bumped out the dates on like ghostbusters um, and i'm just kind of signaling further risk because if more of those bump out i'm gonna have to zero out more movies um, and so I'm just trying to be careful there. A couple notes at the bottom. So all of these forecasts exclude any um, unannounced mergers and acquisitions. So like if there's expenses that I couldn't forecast, you know, those are going to hit this bottom line. Uh, but we'll be able to kind of do a walk and account for those. If there's extra debt payoff, um, which would be awesome. You know, so far, anytime Adam's announced extra debt payments, they've come at like a 40 to 50 percent discount, which is kind of like adding to earnings. I'll explain that another day. But um, there's a there's an immediate return on your investment is really what I'm saying when he pays this debt off at discounts. Um, so I love seeing that, but that would potentially change some numbers because they might kind of book that as a one-time expense um, and then update the balance sheet and all of that. We'll talk through that in another video. Um, and then if there's any other one-time strategic expenses, you know, like when he invested in Highcroft, I could not have uh, forecast that and it showed up as an expense in that quarter. So um, it, uh, the good news is, like I said, I've got all these details going back. I make notes for myself so I can see when there's one-time expenses and then I don't have to reforecast those. Um, that's why it's important to call those out as one-time. Uh, the second kind of note here at the bottom, so in the past two fourth quarters, there have been what's called goodwill impairment. Um, I've got an entire video I did on goodwill impairment if you want to understand that more. We got trolled on that once. There, there's a particular... Um, hater account on YouTube who loves to troll AMC. And so someone had come to me and said, hey, they made a really scary video basically about goodwill impairment. Um, and I kind of clarified that and helped calm everybody down. It's not a cash expense. It doesn't burn any of AMC's cash. It's it's a balance sheet it basically hit where you write down um, some assets. I don't want to cover that now. I've got a whole video on that. But I'm just letting you know that in terms of the earnings on paper, again, it's not a cash expense. It doesn't burn any cash. But both of the last two years, you can see here at the bottom, we had an impairment cost that they booked in the fourth quarter. So this earnings number I've got in Q4 um, potentially could look worse on paper if there's yet another um, goodwill impairment cost. Don't know if that would continue or not, especially in light of the improved attendance um, and revenues. So uh, that's you can kind of kind of hat tip here that that's related. Go see that other video if you want to know about goodwill impairment. Um, and then finally, I don't have, like I already said, I don't have any assumptions around credit card revenues. Um, I don't know fully how many people are signed up yet and even what's the revenue per month that AMC kind of gets as any kind of kickback from the banks. Um, so I'm just not ready to forecast that. So I haven't added it. And I'll just take that as a positive. I'd rather have a good surprise than a bad surprise in earnings. And in particular, I'd rather underhype than overhype you guys. Uh, you know, I like to stay conservative. I think most of you know that so far. So bottom line, um, actually, no, let's do, let's do some notes on cash flows. So, um, reminder, you've heard me talk about this on this channel before. Um, uh, we've had a positive cash flow before a positive cash flow quarter before it was a Q4 of 2021. It was Spider-Man, no way home hit so hard. Um, and there were a couple other things that kind of broke AMC's way and we had a positive cash flow compared to that quarter. We now have less debt, lower rent, a higher box office, more movies, higher attendance, and higher food and beverage spending per person. Um, there's a couple other expenses that are actually better now too. So basically what you should hear is we have a lot more revenue and a lot less expense than a quarter where we had positive cash flow before. I bang that drum so hard because um, I see some accounts out there who try to scare you about AMC burning cash. And I'm just like, no way. We're, in my opinion, since April of this year, when Mario kind of was crushing it, uh, the entire last nine months of the year, you, know, you can see this, it's basically this third kind of bullet over, final nine months of the year combined are cash flow positive. So I'm not saying there's no months where there's a negative you know, cash burn, but I'm saying overall, um, I believe the business is generating cash now because, let's just go back again, I'm gonna keep just banging this point. We're in a new reality. Just take these three quarters, think about how much higher than these three quarters they are. We're generating a lot more cash than we were. So I believe the final nine months of this year combined, so if you were to kind of look across those three earnings call and add it all up, kind of lump it together, uh, is cash flow positive. 
Now, just think about if that's nine more months of Shorty having to wait because AMC is not earning any cash, um, that's a real problem for the shorts. That's also why I highlight that so much. Now, people got confused and twisted and thought because I highlighted so much, especially a couple months ago, um, that I believed AMC was cash flow positive. They thought maybe that that meant I was kind of, um, you know, I don't know, changing my tune on the conversion and reverse split and all that. No, I, I have long said, and go back through any video I did about the vote, that I want AMC to have access to capital. Um, and the fact that AMC is generating cash from its business does not mean it won't have capital needs in the future. Like there's lump sum debt payments coming up, in particular in kind of 2025, 2026, 2027. So obviously those are out years. Adam has even said recently in his open letter, there's some in 2024. Um, but that's not the really big stuff. So the bigger debt is farther out. So that's good. But he's he's not wrong and he's not misleading when he says, hey, there are some lump sum payments coming up unless we can refinance. And of course, having access to capital also makes the banks friendlier to refinance. There's just a lot of strategic reasons, but well, both strategic and operational, um, why the company needs access to capital. We need Judge Zern to go ahead and you know approve this settlement or just dismiss the whole case with prejudice. You guys know my point of view on that. So just hear me clearly. You should be celebrating that we're generating cash. You should be sleeping well at night, in my opinion, relaxed, you know, fear-free. Don't let anyone, you know, FUD you on cash burn for AMC. But on the other hand, that doesn't, you know, two things can be true. It doesn't change the need for AMC to have access to extended capital, um, whether that's for some of these lump sum debt payments or strategic opportunities. Like look at all these regal properties that are closing if AMC can get those for pennies on the dollar, perhaps, you know, they're profitable. Um, so there's some things like that. Or, you know, I've long wanted maybe a merge with a studio or something like that. Uh, there's just a lot of opportunities out there if AMC has access to capital. So, like I said, bottom line, AMC is generating cash, in my opinion, because the box office is so huge and because we all like our concessions and because popcorn is out in the grocery stores. So, bottom, bottom line, Here's kind of, we're getting to the end here, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Um, Q2, like I said, I'll do that video. We'll kind of break down earnings. I'm just sort of giving it a plus plus, like um, deeply positive earnings for Q2, in my opinion. Again, forecast, I could be wrong. Um, Q3, now that it's overperforming so strongly, basically matching Q2's box office, but the popcorn business has expanded a little farther. So again, I'm saying kind of deeply positive earnings. Um, Q4, there's strike risk, so that's starting to be real. But, you know, think of it like a war chest. Q2 and Q3 are adding to AMC's war chest so much that it can, the two of those can wipe out any negative in Q4 uh, because Q2 and Q3 are so strong. So that's going to be awesome. Um, it'll feel like a blip, basically, in my opinion, at some point. Uh, and then combine the final three quarters, even with the strike impacts, like I said, our positive earnings and positive cash flow. So I'm feeling really, really good about where we're at, but also wanted to just kind of set the tone of reality. If people are talking about a $3 billion box office quarter, like, no, I don't think so. Um, but that should not take away from us saying, holy cow, this is huge. This is awesome. Lastly, look, you know what to do. Go see movies, buy popcorn, use the AMC credit card, spread positivity because we're winning. Let's go.